Could you just not hit a pothole for about three seconds? Two, three. Brilliant. What's the point? Where's Rose? Rose? Um, she, she... Never mind. What's this? We don't have time for any new cases. It's a formality. Read the first few pages. You'll see. Got the front door. Go round the back. Here, this is good. Thank you. Here. OK, we're ready to do our hair now. OK, everybody. They need this place clear now. They can't check the phones for bugs if you're all making calls. Apparently, it speeds things up if we all move outside for 10 minutes. Digital watches, mobile phones, pacemakers, take them all with you. Yeah, that's Rose's desk. She's not turned up. Uh, well, she's out in a case. Um, shall I, uh... On time. Well, what is it? Fire drill? They're sweeping the office for listening devices. It's routine, apparently. Uh, excuse me. No, excuse me. That, what happened to my dad? Oh, I did that. I had a sort of fungus growing all over it. So what's this, then? Share it out. Don't spend a lot of time on it. We don't have any time for another case. Low priority. Oh, it's low priority. It's fine. George Paris. So, what did George Paris do that's so fascinating for everybody? Joyce? He killed a fellow prisoner called Turner. Armed only with a toothbrush, apparently. I didn't know you could do that. You can't. That's why it's murder. Where are you? Page 8. Prison Officer Weaver. Hey, Paris. George. Fancy again. George Paris tended to avoid the other prisoners, especially the white prisoners. Alan Turner, the man he killed, was a popular kind of man, newly arrived on the wing but quick to make friends. Right. Turner, ain't it? Alan. Oh, great. I think it's stuck with a world beater. Hey, George, give us a song before you go. On the night of the 10th of January, 2001, I was doing a check of the wings latrines when I came upon Alan Turner. <gasps> what happened at the appeal? Paris said his confession was coerced. By whom? Um, found himself unable to say for fear of retribution. Appeal chucked out. Surprise, surprise. What do they expect us to do? Actually, it's not him that's asked for a review. It's his 19-year-old son, Vincent. We won't have seen much of his old man over the years. Why not? Because George Paris was convicted 16 years ago for a firearms offence. Went on hunger strike, took hostages twice, which is why he's still there. Then the murder. Be an old man by the time he comes out. Well, there's no harm meeting the guy. Which prison's he in? I'm not sure. You call them. No, I'll call them. You, um, have a ciggy in the car while you wait. Hello? Yes, it's uh, Mr. Maloney. We spoke, yes. Yes. Well, I just wonder whether you have that um, information for me. Good. 
And does that include airport tax? Is that a double bed? Oh, king size, terrific. Hello? Yes, it's uh, Mr. Maloney. Hello? Spoke. Yes. Yes. Hello? Well, I just wonder whether you have that um, information. Is that a double bed? Oh, king size, terrific. Is that a double bed? Is there somebody on this line? Am I interrupting something? What? No. What's the matter? This debugging thing. Blokes with Geiger counters swarming all over the place. We've got to wait in the bloody car park. Yeah. I go to make a call just now and I get cut off, right? To the prison? Well, no, actually, but... Well, who to, then? Well, it doesn't matter. I pick the phone up to redial the number and I hear my whole conversation played back to me. Well, prisons record their calls and machines go wrong. It wasn't the prison. Well, who was it then? Travel agent. Where are you going? Nowhere. Look, forget I mentioned it. It's just a coincidence, OK? Well, try this for size. Now, what are you ringing a travel agent for if you're not going anywhere? I then ring the prison service and George Paris has gone missing. Oh, you mean he's escaped? No, he hasn't escaped. He's being transferred and they can't give us his new location yet. Oh, obviously, it's just another coincidence, but now I'm officially stuck as to how to make a start. Yes, but you see, Maloney, you see, this is why they've given you somebody clever to work with. You're right, we can't go and ask George Paris if he murdered Alan Turner with a toothbrush, but we can start finding out who the son is and who the victim was. Turner's address before he entered prison for what turned out to be the last time and you can drop me on the way because we have to pass Vincent Paris's address. Which is a totally spooky coincidence. It's just a case review, Maloney. Paranoia really doesn't suit you. The catalogue, man. Uh, no, no. I'm sorry to bother you. I'm oh. looking for number 27. Oh, there's no 27 here, mate. Ah, uh, well, according to this, there is. Look, it'd be in the middle of the gas holder, wouldn't it? There's no 27. There never has been. A family called Turner. Oh yeah, yeah, Turner. Yeah, 27. <laughs> in the middle of the gas holder. Look, I'm trying to watch the golf, mate. St. Paris. Not here. You're from the police. I'm Rose Linden from the Criminal Justice Review Agency. Are you related to Vincent? What is it about? I need to talk to him about George Paris, his father. Is he dead? No. No, he's not dead. We've been asked to consider if there's been a miscarriage of justice. What is it to do with Vincent? Well, he's the one who's asked us to review his father's case. You make a mistake. No, no I haven't actually. Vincent and his dad shortly before he went into prison. Thank you. How is George? I haven't met him yet. 
I'm, I'm sorry, would you mind telling me? Gina Paris. George is my son. Vincent, my grandson. And Vincent lives here. Here comes and goes. You looking for me? If you're Vincent Paris, I'm Rose Linden from the CJRA. I don't know I'll have to talk to anybody. I don't really know the man. So, I mean, somebody should just look at all the facts, is what I'm saying. The guy's not a murderer. He's a choir boy. Well, we will be looking at the facts, but it would be Do useful... I have to talk to you? No, you don't have to do anything. It would just help if you told me why you've asked for the review. Why now? Do I have to give you reasons? No. Good. See you later, Grandma. I've got a rehearsal. Rehearsal? He makes music. Like his dad. He had a lovely voice. So, it's the murder you're looking into? Well, yes. It, uh, can I ask, do you think he's a murderer? I don't know. I don't know my son anymore. The last time I saw him, there was a lot of anger in him. I have to go to work now. What about Vincent's mother? She died when he was two. I can't help you, Miss Lim. I know nothing about the murder. I have to go. Can I, can I just... When was the last time you saw your son? Three years since I saw my son. to help. She's just keen. She's keen? Right. Maloney. Oh, good. They've found him. And so where is he? Yes, thanks. We will. Uh, George Paris. We can see him today. How'd you do? George Paris had a lovely singing voice. If he looks anything like his son, then he's a beautiful man. Or was. And, uh, neither his son or his mother wants to talk to me. How about you? Well, the address they gave us for Turner doesn't exist. Are you sure you went to the right place? Maybe MI5 turned up first and hid the house before you got there. Coming. Before George Paris disappears again. This is Miss Linden. Yes, we can introduce ourselves. Thank you. I think you know who we are and why we're here, Mr. Paris. Do you mind if we called you George? I did not request this meeting. Your son believes you've been the victim of a miscarriage of justice. Do you think he could be right? 
No. Why smoke in here? Would you like one, George? Oh, Vincent. He looks very like you. <laughs> I want everybody to know this is not me asking for this stuff, man. I want everybody to know that. Everybody like who? I want to go back to myself. What's going on, George? We're trying to help you. Son's trying to help you. You give my son a message. You tell him to leave a while alone. We've been trying to find out all we can about Turner, the man you were convicted of killing. You deaf? You didn't hear me? I said, leave it alone! What do you do? Look at it! You see where you make up? Look at it! Look at it! Get him out of here! You people, you stay away from me, right? You stay away from me! Calm down! Look, I call my cards. I call. Calm down. Let go. Let go. You, you, you stay away from me, right? You don't come back. Stay away from me, right? Keep out of me. Nobody has to go in the boat. These case notes have been out of my sight and in your possession for 37 minutes. Well, we were rather busy, Mum. You may have noticed. And it was you that left them in there. Has anybody read them? Listen, Mum. Yeah, and stop calling me Mum. I'm not the Princess Royal. Yeah, well, I don't think I'm confused about that, Miss Linden. And as for your notes, believe me, there's nothing any of you can tell any of us about George Paris. Look, this is a man who has twice taken officers hostage, not to mention cut another prisoner's throat. Now, oddly, we don't like that. Sorry for any inconvenience. Good afternoon. You see George's face when you mention his son? Yeah, but he only won't bar me when you mention investigating the dead mum Turner. Look, it's his life. I can understand a son wanting to clear his dad's name. But... No, no. You know, something's not right here. George Paris came into prison 16 years ago, having pleaded guilty to possessing a replica handgun during an alleged raid on a bank. He got six years. 16 years on, after hostage-taking and hunger strikes, he's still here. And his mother obviously thought we were investigating the original case. And anyway, does he look like a bank robber to you, Maloney? Well, yeah, I suppose. No, he doesn't. Well, it's irrelevant anyway. We're not investigating that case. Well, why not? Why not start at the beginning with this guy? No. The murder case was low priority. This is off the map. OK. You do what you want to do, I'll do what I want to do. Brilliant. Teamwork. So I do all the work relevant to the actual case, well, you waste public money on stuff from years ago. Why not spend your whole life digging around in the archives? Did King Alfred really burn the cakes, or was he fitted up? No idea, Maloney. And another thing, all this business with the notes, you made us look stupid. I mean, I'm paranoid. No, that was different. You are being paranoid about your phone, oh. whereas I wasn't. Right. You see the difference? Not at first, but I do now. You want a lift? No, I'll get the tube. You not fancy a drink, then? If I join you for a minute? Uh, well, actually, um, I, I was. Uh... Look, um, I don't know what sort of pub this is, but uh, I'm not uh, a regular, if you get my drift. The man you've been seeking by the name of Turner never existed. What? What happened to him shouldn't happen to a dog. 
A lot of us are pretty pissed off about it. A lot of who? Who are you? Everybody you talk to about this will blow smoke up your ass. Good luck. No, no, hang on a minute. Ah! Jesus Christ! an interesting bloke in a pub. You must tell me how it's done. Well, he followed me in, I think. What sort of a pub was this, Maloney? Possibly a gay pub. Have a look. Local paper. Death notice. It's the same bloke. Only in the death notice, he's not called Turner, he's called McCaffrey. And the dates match. Worked in the security business, yeah, right. Died in an accident, yes, an accident involving a toothbrush. Wife Jean, six months pregnant with the couple's first child. Well, that was tough. Okay. Well, that's your day sorted, Maloney. wonder if the wife knew. I'll go and ask her. Who was this guy in the pub? Was he a cop? No idea. Could have been. Why don't you just post it to you? He wanted to tell me something. What? He said everyone you talk to about this will blow smoke up your ass. Do you go in this pub a lot, Maloney? You coming, or are you still on ancient history? Maloney. Just be careful. I've spoken to George, and uh, the only time any life came into his face was when I mentioned you, Vincent. I need to be told what happened to him starting at the beginning with the bank robbery. All right. You want to know about George? Come with me. That's right. Now, I would like to book that weekend for two. Brilliant. Now, could I arrange with you for champagne and flowers in the room? Are you looking for me? Uh, yes. OK, what do you want? It's about the murder of your husband. I'd like to start by asking you who told you I'd be coming. Did they tell you why? Yeah. You're trying to get that bastard Paris off. Well, good luck to you. But you tell him from me you won't live ten minutes if he ever gets out onto the streets. Well, you've a right to be angry. Polly never saw her father. George Paris killed him before she got the chance. Yeah, I'm angry. Mrs. McCaffrey, this is difficult. But I have to ask you about your husband. Every day I think I'm going to wake from this nightmare and find him walking through that door. Even now. I don't think this is quite what you wanted to hear, is it? 
You want to ask about did he hate blacks and poor old George Paris got provoked by him? Did he? Hate black people? Alan? Alan never hated any living creature. He was one of the finest men you could meet. When did you see him last? Prison visit, about a week before he was murdered. And did everything seem normal? Well, what was normal about any part of it? What was he doing in there? I'm not even allowed to know that. Are you saying you think he was innocent? Innocent of what? Um... A grievous bodily harm, wasn't it? Oh, Jesus Christ, this country sickens me! Surely they've had to tell you! Tell me what? My husband was a police officer. A police officer? Well, are you saying he was inside for corruption or something and not GBH? Have you not got the brains you were born with, man? He wasn't a prisoner. He was working undercover for the special unit. Somebody grasped him up and that bastard Paris cut my husband's throat. If you want to see justice triumph, find the man who grasped my husband. Do that, will you? It was 1988. The bank was there. George and his friend Benjamin walked through the precinct towards the bank. They had no idea what was waiting for them. OK, this is it. Two black males approaching now. <laughs> Forget the man you met. Try to imagine the man he was, a young man with his life ahead of him. And a little boy, he loved more than his own life. I've heard the story so many times. You tell it to me? Please? You still got that thing, Grandma? Wild man, the criminal. Public enemy number one. Went to rob a bank with a dry cleaning ticket. The dry cleaner was next door to the bank. Two young black men. Okay, boys, let's go, let's go. Hands up, nigga. into this park. There were thick bushes at this end. That's where they eventually caught him. We never claimed his suit. They fired on an unarmed man. 
with women and children around. Yeah, and even they know they're not allowed to do that. So they get themselves a toy gun, and guess what? Turns out his fingerprints are on it. Sorry, but why not plant a real gun on him? Because it had to be found in front of the same people who'd seen the arrest to justify them opening fire. And there it is. A nigger with a gun and a cop who's a hero. Found a gun. You don't believe him? Yeah. Yes, I do. I think I'm beginning to understand. You might sympathize. You won't ever understand. Right. I've made the inquiries you asked me to make. Neither the Metropolitan Police nor the Home Office have any record of an Alan McCaffrey. Did you ask about the use of undercover policemen in British jails? Flat denial. Special unit? Doesn't exist. The two officers involved in the original offence, Inspector Bennett is retired. Sergeant Chatham went to New South Wales many years ago. So what about McCaffrey's wife? I am informed that Mrs. Turner has suffered a breakdown since her husband was murdered. It seems she never knew until his conviction that he was a career criminal. You're informed by whom? It seems to who? And the fact that Turner and McCaffrey are identical and died on the same day, what's that, an amazing coincidence? Can I ask who gave you her new address? Um, well, a bloke in a pub. A bloke in a pub, I see. What did he say? He said uh, every, uh, nothing. And you're spending far too much time on irrelevant events. Paris's conviction for carrying a replica firearm has never been seriously questioned. Now, can I remind you both that you are supposed to be working as a team on the murder in prison of Alan Turner? Who doesn't exist? No, he doesn't, Maloney, because he's dead. Now, will you please both put some effort into finding out if George Paris killed him? Was he Turner or McCaffrey? McCaffrey, definitely. Was McCaffrey a villain or a cop? A cop. Absolutely sure? Positive. Right. An undercover cop is murdered by a fellow prisoner. That is nightmare PR for the Mets, so no wonder they want to deny it happened. But why doesn't George Paris want it out in the open? And if George didn't kill him, then who did? I think George could tell us that. So do I, but I don't think he's going to, do you? And I think that has to do with what happened the day he went to the dry cleaners and ended up in prison for the rest of his life. Well, according to his mother and son, Sorry to remind you, Rose, but George did plead guilty to the firearms charge. Yeah, I keep forgetting that. But why? What makes an innocent man plead guilty? No suggestion of it being beaten out of him. So why? When the floor's full, just use the ashtray. It looks like his mother. No, I don't. I look like him. What's he do? Him have a job? He make music. He sings. He's not really singing.
talk to him, Vincent. Talk to your father. That sounds like a jungle drum and bass tune. <laughs> Thought you had radios in there. I lose my radio. Well, I can't live without my music. <laughs> you know, it's funny. But you can learn to live without. Look, uh, <laughs> your music, whatever you call it. I'm glad for you. But if you think you come here to get some easy money, like compensation money, because your father out and is all due to you, forget it. I'm not going anywhere. So you tell your little white friend them to stop doing what they're doing. Was funny. Hey! You understand? Good. Now go home. Is that why you ask him to come here? So you can insult him? Just do what I ask. Go home, get a review, stop. All right? I want to go back to my cell, that's all right? Go home. And don't come back, eh? Alison Francis. Rose Linden. Maloney. Sorry for the fancy dress. I'm um, in and out of chancery. Probably be called back any minute. So. George Paris. Well. Hmm. I'm glad you're looking into that. I still have nightmares about that case. I don't know whether you know it was my first case as a barrister. No, we didn't. Practically my last as a criminal lawyer. I soon specialised in commercial law. What happened to him after he got out? He's still in prison. He never accepted his sentence. Hostages, hunger strikes. Jesus wept. But it's not the original case we're looking at. This is a murder he was convicted of three years ago. Murder? Absolutely not. The firearm charge. The alleged bank robbery. Was George guilty? God, no. So why did he plead guilty? Look, you have to understand. Five white policemen all swearing he had a gun. One black defendant saying, no, I didn't. One red-faced judge going crazy about gun crime. I mean, we all knew what had actually happened. Bennett had fired on George. His barrister was going to put George in the box and let him tell the jury the truth. I mean, high-risk strategy. I thought you were his barrister. I was given the job as a last-minute stand-in. Where was his real barrister? Double booked by his clerk. Still on a case in Aylesbury. It happens. Quite a lot. To be honest, I didn't even have time to read all the evidence. The thing I still have bad dreams about is that George Paris came to court that morning believing that he would get justice. And then I turn up. So, but Mr. Manchester, he won't be coming today. Stuck with me, I'm afraid. Only he really thinks we can get a result. Well, we will. We'll do our best. I just had time this morning to uh, speed through most uh, of the evidence. They want to talk. Oh. Well, George, everything's cool. We're in good hands. We're doing fine. Hey, George. Bringing them here, that wasn't a good idea, man. But, man, I'm going home, right? They're going to see me declared innocent. OK, they want a deal. They'll elbow the bank robbery charge. OK, now we're talking. If you plead guilty to possessing the gun. No. No, you see, Mr Manchester, he wants me to go into that box and tell the whole story. I didn't do anything. You can do that if you want to. But it's your word against theirs. No witnesses have come forward yeah, for you. Because they're all white. 
And I have to give you the best advice I can. They promise it'll play well with this judge if you plead. Possibly, possibly even a suspended sentence. You could still be going home to your wife and little boy. My wife's dead. Sorry. I'm not helping here, am I? They're gonna let me go if I plead guilty. It's up to the judge, so... Possibly. Probably. I don't know, George. It's up to you. Would all parties in the case of Crown versus Paris please make their way to the Supreme That's us, George. You've got to decide now, man. They're going in. Last chance. Tell my mum will. You tell her to take Vincent home. I don't want them in court to see me plead guilty. Bullshit. He got six years. Sorry. I'm just... I'm very sorry. What a bloody mess they made of it. <clears throat> Hello, Maloney. Yes, OK. Vincent Paris wants to see us. He's been to see George. Well, no prizes for guessing what he wants to say to us. So do we drop the case, if that's what they want? Probably. But let's put up a fight, yeah? Look, can I just say you've been right about this? What happened to George Paris all those years ago does matter. I don't see how it helps us, but it does matter. Yeah, we could try for a pardon on the firearms charge, but... what good does that do him sitting in a prison cell for the rest of his life? We've got nothing to help him beat the murder charge. Say we prove Turner was a cop, that just gives George a better motive. He's got every right to pathologically hate cops. He's got a right to hate a lot of us, actually. Put the kettle on. None of that stuff is gone. And usually manage to keep Vincent away from the things when he has a relapse. A relapse? He's a heroin addict. Miss Linda. You asked to see us. This is Mr. Maloney. Yeah, I changed my mind. Uh, I want you to stop it. Now. I'm sorry, but it doesn't work like that. We decide that, not you. I asked for it. I can call it off. Not necessarily. Why, Vincent? Why the change? George was hard on him. George wants you to stop. No. I want you to stop. And you have to do what I tell you. Your father's not thinking straight, and nor are you. My decision, final. You! Stand! Get down! You sit down! Yeah. This is what happens to people that don't realize who they're dealing with. Say goodbye. Hold hands. 
on three, one, Goodbye, two, Goodbye, three. If my face was white, I would not be sitting here. Oh, here's your black bastards. Carson is the Met's biggest single problem. Be frightened. How do you plead to the charge of murder? Thank you.